We all have heard the Kickstarter horror stories, where developers manipulate your feelings under the promise of creating spiritual successors of games that define your childhood. Mighty Number no. 9 is the first game that comes to mind, but not everything is bad though. Look at the likes of Shovel Knight and A Hat in Time. While not exactly spiritual successors, they are still great games inspired by childhood defining games. That's where we got another contender. In hopes of bringing back the Metro style Castlevania games, series producer Koji Garashi began a campaign on Kickstarter to fund his own project. After a budget of $5.5 million and 4 years of development, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night came to be. I have to confess though, I still haven't played a Castlevania Igabania game, not even the masterpiece that is Symphony of the Night, but I still have a lot of interest in Bloodstained for 3 reasons. 1. Even if I still haven't played a Castlevania game in that style, the Metroidvania genre is something I really enjoy. Most of it comes from the Metroid series, but I'm always willing to give a shot to games that have this style of gameplay. 2. I really, really, really like the design of the game's main character, Miriam. You can't blame me for this. And 3. Because I have to admire the incredible effort put into this. Just a few months before the game released, Koji Garashi showed how he took the criticism on the game's graphics and proved everyone wrong by making them look better. Just check out this video and <laughs> yeah, the difference is night and day. But of course, graphics don't matter at the end of the day if your game plays like shit. So what do we have here exactly? Was it another evil cash grab nostalgia? Or was it the triumphant return of a dying species? I'll start by telling you that he's so fucking good. Bloodstain doesn't deviate at all from what a Metroidvania should be, exploring interconnected rooms in search for items and abilities and grant you access to new areas and discover tons of secrets, all of that while fighting enemies and bosses that want to stop you at any cost. From beginning to end, Bloodstain stays true to heart to the genre. You play as Miriam, a girl who's been possessed by a crystal who slowly corrupts her body, but in exchange grants her demonic power and strength beyond of a normal human being. She ventures into a castle that emerged from hell in order to confront her old friend Jibul and find a way to get rid of her curse. She's not alone in this journey, as there's also a handful of characters willing to lend her a hand or also get in her way. If you play the prequel game Curse of the Moon, you'll find a lot of familiar faces here, like the likes of the alchemist Alfred or the samurai Sangetsu who is voiced by David Hater of all people. Miriam. I'm trying to sneak around, but I'm dummy thick, and the clap of my ass cheeks keeps alerting the demons. Miriam controls extremely well, she has that perfect flow in her movements that makes platforming a non-issue. She has a backstep ability and also a slide maneuver that lets her reliably get away from enemy attacks. Miriam is also capable of wielding a wider range of weapons, including swords, boots, whips, guns, among others. But she can also absorb magical shards that hold different abilities. Some of them enhance your inherent abilities and are mandatory in order to delve deeper into the castle. Some others can directly affect your stats and drop rates, but the grand majority of shards are mostly inclined towards a offensive capabilities, and there is something here for every situation, like throwing axes or shurikens to reliably attack from a distance, directional spells to kill those hard to hit enemies, shapeshift into another being with a different moveset, or summon Shovel Knight to aid you in battle, because of course Shovel Knight has to appear in every indie game. On the surface the gameplay is very basic and easy to understand, but it gets more depth because of the variety there is and Miriam's potential to grow. Bloodstain also has RPG elements where you can level up your character and wear different pieces of equipment that also affect your stats, elemental resistance and passive abilities. Throughout the castle, you can also come across some bookshelves that teach you directional inputs that let you unleash more advanced techniques. At first they are exclusive to specific weapons, but if you manage to master them, you can use them on any weapon of that category. The game simply has that perfect degree of difficulty, the one that escalates accordingly as the player and the character grow. I got my ass handed over a few times, but I had nobody to blame but myself. I was never asked to do something I couldn't do at the time, and there was not a single instance where I felt the game was being unfair. While the grand majority of the game takes place inside a castle, there is no shortage of different areas you can explore. You got a garden, a library, a cathedral, a desert, an underwater cave, and so much more. And all of them are jam-packed with a great variety of enemies and blood pumping boss battles. The castle itself is big, but luckily there's enough war rooms and saving points so you don't have to constantly worry about dying and losing your progress. These places are no strangers to rewarding you for experimenting with the environments. You can find expansions for your health and magic meters, more ammunition capacity for your guns, or you might come across manuals to forge equipment or recipes to cook foods. This takes us to Arventville. You can call this place your main base because here's where you constantly come back to restock your supplies and get new equipment. First, we have the alchemist Johannes. His work is to transmute the materials you find around the castle into new weapons, new equipment and exclusive shards. And he also lets Miriam use the kitchen to cook dishes. These dishes serve as restorative items, but the main reason you want them is because the first time you consume them you get stat bonuses. 
Then we got the shop run by the exorcist Dominic, who is very self-explanatory. But the cool thing about the shop is that any item you create with alchemy will be instantly added to the catalog so you can buy it whenever you want. Bloodstain takes an interesting structure. For the first half of the game it's kinda linear. With some basic exploration and common sense you'll find your path in no time. If by any chance you happen to get lost, you can always visit Dominic or the obviously not Dracula of this universe to give you tips on how to proceed. Then you will reach a certain point and trust me, you will know when that point will be, where apparently there's no new areas to explore. That's the point where you must remember the places you have visited and use the shards you have acquired by far to open new paths for you. There were only two instances where I felt it got extremely cryptic. The first time was on the forbidden underground waterway. There was simply nothing else I could do, and I still didn't have an ability that helped me to proceed. It just so happened that by mere coincidence some random demon dropped a shard that let me awkwardly move underwater. All the items you have acquired by far made sense. You defeat the boss and it's emphasized how important your new ability is. This one happened a pure random on a random enemy that may or may not drop this shard. And as nature will have it, this underwater section was tedious as hell and... Yeah, this was the lowest point of the game for me. The other instance was getting the Aegis armor needed to traverse this little spikes corridor. Finding this thing was so cryptic I honestly got kinda mad when I found out you need to use your invert ability in a very specific spot in order to find the treasure chest that has this armor. Since I am already in the topic of the negative things about this game, what about that performance and those loading times, man? Symphony of the Night has always had the reputation for having to wait 3 hours to restart the game after you get a game over. And it seems that Bloodstain took notes of that too. Isn't time punishing enough? Well, apparently not. The loading times here after that are obnoxious. At best you will have to wait 20 seconds, but at worst you'll have to wait 3 minutes. We are talking about Sonic 06 loading times. And please just don't die on the first day of the game. I had to wait about 5 minutes for another chance cause the game also had to reload the opening cutscene. And that's just the surface of the barrel, cause the performance of the game can be quite troublesome at times. I lost account of how many scares I got because the game made me believe it crashed after an hour without saving. I noticed this is very common when you move to another area and an enemy drops an item, and the frame rate is very prone to slow down when the action gets tight, especially against this specific boss. A major shame, because without those problems Bloodstain will be a perfectly fluid experience, but still, I'm incapable of feeling angry because the game is extremely fun to play. I enjoy every aspect of it. The gameplay, the feel, the characters, the boss battles, the music, which I'll discuss more in a little bit, and the graphics. They can look quite rough around the edges and some animations could have been less robotic, but the improvements Koji Garashi and his team put into them are very noticeable, as each area has its own identity and rooms barely feel samey. Backgrounds are good looking, character design is great, the atmosphere is enveloping, and Miriam has a fair degree of customization. You can change her hairstyle and some of the accessories she has equipped will reflect on her appearance as well. <gasps> is that a Jojo reference? No, 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 no. Not everything has to be a Jojo reference. Oh, what is Miriam doing? <sighs> it is a Jojo reference. I also have to appreciate that there's an effort in world building. I'm interested in how Miriam and Jewel came to be, and the shells around the castle offer more insight in that. What is this so important book called the Liber Logaya? Johannes tells you that. And finally, one of the highlights of the game, the music. I may still haven't played any of the Igabania games, but I am no stranger to how iconic the Castlevania music is. I love to give it a listen from time to time. Bloodstain is not starving from wonderful music composed by the legendary Michiru Yamane. My favorite track just has to be Voyage of Promise, a song so damn good that along with a fantastic opening level left me a very nice first impression of the game and was a great taste of all the wonderful things that were to come. And there's not much else I can say. Bloodstain doesn't particularly bring anything new to the table, but just like I mentioned already, this game from beginning to end, it's a true to hard metroidvania game, and a damn good one at that. I fell so much in love with this game, I had to experience everything. And I mean, everything. It is an experience that is filled with love, is rewarding, and above everything, is fun. And there's still more content to come for free, and who knows, maybe they will fix those performance issues I mentioned, effectively eliminating the biggest drawback of this game. 
But even so, I really believe that Bloodstained Ritual of the Night is a fantastic game that will make you savor every moment. It took Castlevania fans 40 years, but I believe Koji Garashi and his team successfully brought a quarty successor to life. So if you're a Metroidvania fan, don't miss on this title and hell, even if you're new to the genre, you will still have a fantastic time with this game. Make Miriam feel proud of you. Until then, thank you guys so much for joining me and I really hope you had an enjoyable time. And if you want to see more, I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to my channel, because that helps me to grow here. And remember to take care, because I'll be seeing you next time. Now, if you excuse me... What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets! But enough talk! How about you? <laughs> uh, who did I miss on this?